All right, good morning, everybody. It's your boy Chopadong, and today's topic is going to be unit size. I've seen that question asked multiple times throughout the Discord channels, and it's very clear to me that we need to start venturing into some sports betting 101 on a little bit more regular basis. Happens to be my wheelhouse where I live, where I've generated basically a full time career. Just by teaching you guys how to prolong your bankrolls, get to be better DFS players, and give yourselves winning chances in the long run. That's basically what DFS Army is founded upon. And I'm going to show you how to do the same thing. You're all DFS Army members, you're all VIPs. So this video is of no consequence other than maybe you don't like to read. We seem to find that a lot of people engage with videos a little bit better. If you like the video, go into Discord and let me know that you liked it. There's no way to really like it or subscribe or anything out on YouTube because this is gonna be a private video anyway. If I open it up someday, please, I would welcome all the likes and subscribes you could give me. But I want to at least show you a little bit about a unit size and what it entails, how to choose the correct unit size for yourself. So I wrote an article today, very, very quick, two minute read, but I did link in it a little deeper dive if that's for you. You can see it scrolling across the main screen here. But if you like strategy articles, a lot of you guys probably go click on these tabs up here. Just click right here on the home page on view all articles. It takes you to a different page that shows you all of the long term evergreen strategy articles we have. You want mastering uh, key positions and proven tips for DFS NFL in 2023. Well, that's been there for about 20 weeks now. You could have read it if you knew about it, but you probably didn't know about it because I'm not telling you enough about this little strategy page, but we're going to probably build it out in the future and give you lots of little nuggets in here that are not necessarily sports related in terms of a specific sport. Therefore, they're not going to get buried by all of the current daily content that we put out here at DFS Army. And game changer for picks fix formats. If you guys don't have access to sports betting in your state, but you want to dabble a little bit, that's where I'm focused because my state, Missouri, sucks and hasn't legalized in three or four years. So we finally get an opportunity on DraftKings to dive in. And I've already started a little bit of a bankroll challenge. I'll probably start publicizing a little bit more. We're already off and running. We're up about 30% in less than a week. So pretty good numbers. Don't know that they'll hold on, but that's why we're going to talk unit size and bankroll management. I know it's boring, but understanding unit size is a very crucial concept when it comes to staying in the game for the long run. So if I click on that article inside our strategy section and just walk you through it really, really quickly, a unit size is a standard bet size, $5, $10 whatever number you choose that represents roughly 1% to 5% of your total bankroll. If you have a $100 bankroll, $1 bet, $5 bet, obviously is within the 1% to 5% range. If you have a $10,000 bankroll, $100 to $500 is inside 1% to 5%. Those are the numbers you should be using. But now whether you choose 1%, 2%, 3%, 4%, or 5%, is there actually a size that makes a difference? Is 1% too little? Is 5% too much? As you read through this, I link you an article right here that we wrote during COVID a couple of years ago. And I want to walk you through this because it's very, very, very important stuff. As I dive into unit size and what size matters, 1%, 5% or whatever, let's take into account an example. Why manage your units? Because if we throw three simulations in there at 10%, 5%, and 3%, you're going to find out that each one played out a little bit differently. I'll let you read the details here, but roughly we created that 54% win rate on a very good um, handicapper and what it would make if he made 1,000 bets. At the end of the 1,000 bets, is he up, is he down within the realm of possibilities and standard deviations and all those variance numbers that you've heard of? We ran that simulation 10 different times to show what your ending bankroll would have been. And what we found out is if you use 10% of your bankroll, 10%, $10 unit sizes on $100 or you know, $100 on $1,000, you're using way too much. You can't survive the negative run, even if you correctly pick more than half of your bets. If you're a 54% winner, you went busto, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, or seven times. And at the end of the other two, you only had a 15 or a $40 win um, profit-wise after a thousand bets to show for it. 
you're not surviving the down swings at 10%. That's not helping you. If you drop that bankroll to 5%, it's still pretty aggressive because there are simulations where you crush 236, 195, good profit numbers over 1,000 bets. But there are a couple where you get too close to bust over for probably uh, your own comfort, and that would be $26, $6, $1 where you went broke, basically. It's still possible at 5%. You haven't completely mitigated the risk. So what we're going to do is recommend an even lower number, 3%, and look at how much steadier things get. Yeah, you still have a bad run. Yeah, you still have a great run. I don't know what's going to happen to you personally over a thousand bets. That's just natural variance. Happens in DFS, happens in sports betting, happens in flipping a coin a hundred times with your nephew. It just happens. I don't know what extreme you're going to catch, what outlier you're going to catch, but I do know you're generally going to fall in between here and all 10 of these simulations profited at 3%. So if you hear me start talking about 3%, this is why. This article is exactly why. I usually use between 1% and 3%. I'm a very, very low risk tolerance kind of guy. My job, my life revolves around keeping you in the game long term. And to do that, I have to play way under my bankroll to set an example. If you're more risk, not as risk averse, if, you're, if you are a more risky individual than I am, good on you. Bank that thing up to you know three percent, five percent. If you only want to put in a hundred bucks, but you've actually got five hundred dollars to set aside for gambling, and you want to use five percent or more, go for it. You might catch one of those outliers to the positive. But if you're like me and you want to sit down and you just want to forget about it and just click, 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 click along, use three percent. Three percent is about the ideal number, and anything under that is really just going to kind of kill some of the volatility and make your swings maybe a little bit less. And that's what we're after. So read these two articles, run through here, find out why we harp on bankroll management, and of course, why our sharps are who they are over at Sharp App or here at DFS Army as we build out towards, I guess, what is the, the, the trending fad of sports betting in the DFS world. So jump on board. The water is great. It's a good day for a swim, no matter where you live. And we're going to get you there. We're going to teach you to become better sports bettors, better DFS players. And it really generally starts with bankroll management. Hopefully you got a kick out of this. And we'll talk to you guys in Discord later. Take care.